Welcome back, everybody. Moving on to step seven and the final step, we have to find now the weighted average cost of capital by using all the information from steps one to six. So before we do that, let's do a little review of what we did. So this here, again, represents a balance sheet. And when we're finding the weighted average cost of capital, we're working with the right side of the balance sheet. So when we receive capital, we take on some debt, take on some equity, take on some preferred equity, then we take that capital, we buy assets, and then our assets make us income. And then we have to pay a return to the people that we took money from. So we went over a series of steps. So the return that we have to pay to the debt holders, we called that the cost of debt. And we figured out what the cost of debt was in step one. Then we figured out what the cost of equity was, the return that we have to pay to shareholders or equity holders, that was step two. Cost of preferred equity, the return that we have to pay to preferred shareholders, that was step three. And then we have to take a weighted average of these costs of capital. And we have to do that by finding the market value of each source of capital. So we found the market value of debt that was step four, market value of equity, that was step five, and then the market value of preferred equity, that was step six. So now that we have all that information, let's find what the market value of the whole company is, because then we could find that weighted average cost of capital. So to find the market value of the company, we have to find the market value of the left side of the balance sheet or the market value of the right side of the balance sheet. Well, notice how we're not given information about the left side, so we're going to have to use all of this information on the right side of the balance sheet. And to find the market value of that whole right side, all we have to do is take the market value of debt, add the market value of equity, add the market value of preferred equity. So if we take that and put it into a more simpler form, we have the value of the company, which is represented by V, is equal to the market value of the debt, which is represented by just this letter D here, just to simplify things, plus the market value of the equity, plus the market value of the preferred. And I put market values right here just for a reminder that we're always dealing with market values. We're not dealing with book values. So all of these letters here represent the market values of the respective sources of capital. So now that we have the value of the whole company, we can take a weighted average cost of capital, which I represented as WACC or the WAC. So let's start off with the debt portion of the company. Well, if you think about it, we can find the percentage of the company that is made up of debt. We can take the debt value, the market value of the debt, and then divide it by the total value of the company. And that would give us the weight of the debt of the company. And then we take that weight and multiply it by the return of the debt or the cost of debt that we found in step one. Now, if you remember that cost of debt or the interest that we pay to bondholders, that is tax deductible. Interest expense is just another expense on the income statement, and that actually reduces our taxes. So this cost of debt, we have to take on an after-tax basis. So we have to multiply this portion of the weighted average cost of capital by one minus T, and that's because when you're dealing with debt specifically with bonds, the interest that we pay to bondholders, that is tax deductible. So we take it on an after-tax basis. Okay, so this represents the debt portion of the weighted average cost of capital. And then we take the equity portion, so we take the market value of equity and divide it by the total value of the company. And that gives us the weight of the equity of the total value of the company. And then we take that weight and multiply it by the return on equity, which we found in step two. And then similarly, we take the market value of the preferred equity divided by the market value of the company as a whole, the V, and then multiply it by the return on preferred, which we found in step three. And then this whole formula here gives us our weighted average cost of capital. 
So we're taking all of that information from steps one to six. So let's actually do a review here. So step one was this, we found the cost of debt. Step two was the return on equity. Then we found the return on preferred, that was step three. Then step four, we found the market value of the debt. So this here was step four. Then step five was finding the market value of the uh, equity. And then finally, we found the market value of the preferred equity, and that was step six. And then in this step, step seven, what we did was we took the market value of debt, equity, and preferred, which we found in steps four, five, and six respectively, added them up, to get this value of the whole company. And then we use that V here three times in this whole formula. And then the tax rate will always be given and you always take the debt portion of the weighted average cost of capital and multiply it by one minus T because interest is tax deductible. So we take that cost of debt or that return on debt on an after tax basis. And then you just plug everything in and that gives you that weighted average cost of capital. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.